Hello and welcome to this film which is all about the hydrolysis of salts. It's the first of the year 12 films about acids and bases and um, as such I suppose it requires a, a fairly good knowledge and understanding of the year 11 material. So um, if, uh, if the stage 2 acids and bases stuff is a bit of a distant memory or you feel like it could do with a bit of review then maybe a good idea to watch the stage 2 films before you go ahead and watch this one. Now you might remember in year 11 we were writing hydrolysis equations for the common acids and bases. In year 12 you also have to be able to do this for salts or for ionic substances. In other words, substances that might not look at first glance as if they're acids or bases but can produce acidic or basic solutions when they are put in water. Okay, so as we've said before, in the waste course if you're asked to explain the pH of a solution you should probably be aiming to write an equation to help you explain. So with that in mind, let's have a look at sodium chloride, okay, a common, commonly known salt, okay, and let's have a look at the two ions that make it up. And what we'll try and do is we will try and write hydrolysis equations for these two ions. In other words, we'll show what would happen if they were to react with water. Now this is big if, okay, some ions don't react with water, let's see what would happen if these ions were to react with water okay so here we've got sodium a positive ion okay there's a negative ion in water that's the OH minus ion so perhaps that will go and join up with the sodium and form sodium hydroxide and we'll be left with what's left from here after you take OH minus and that's H plus now if that reaction were to happen then we'd have H plus in the solution making it acidic okay but notice we've got a strong base here and we're used to strong bases reacting in that direction in a one-way fashion. Okay? So, yes, you might produce these things, but they're not going to stay as those. They're going to just react together and turn back into these things. All right? So, in other words, this forward reaction doesn't really happen. And, in fact, we don't produce any H plus ions in solution as a result of the reaction between sodium and water. So, we often don't bother writing this hydrolysis equation because it doesn't actually happen. Okay, now if chloride were to react with water and take its H plus away, perhaps, okay, so water might act as an acid here, we might produce hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, and we'd be left with the conjugate base of water, which is OH minus. Now, if that were to happen, remember your Arrhenius theory says that you'd have hydroxide ions in solution that would make it basic, but notice we've got a strong acid here. We're used to seeing them reacting that way, one directional. Okay, and certainly with them with the, when they're with a the base, they're just going to want to react to form these things. They're not going to want to turn back into those things. So that reaction is not really going to happen. And we're not going to get this formation of hydroxide ions in solution as a result of chloride ions reacting with water. So again, we don't really write hydrolysis equations for the chloride ion because it doesn't react with water. What can we say about the pH? Well, this has got to do with the concentration of H plus ions. Okay, now there isn't an excess of H plus ions and there isn't an excess of OH minus ions in solution. So the concentration of H plus is equal to the concentration of OH minus. And the pH of the salt is neutral. Okay, sodium chloride is a neutral salt because it contains two neutral ions. That is to say, ions that don't hydrolyze water or they don't hydrolyze in water and they don't produce acidic or basic ions. Okay, let's have a look at a salt that does produce acidic or basic ions. This is ammonium chloride. We'll start off again. We'll write the ions that we've got in this substance. And we're going to try and write these ions, equations for these ions reacting with water. And as we've just decided, chloride ions could potentially take the H plus from water. Okay, and form HCl and OH minus. But this reaction isn't going to happen, okay, because... The chloride ion is a neutral ion, or in other words, it forms a strong acid, which is just going to turn straight back into those things. Okay, So that reaction doesn't happen. What would this reaction form if it happened? Well, H plus could be given to the water, so the water could act as a base. Okay, This is actually the conjugate acid of ammonia. So if I take away H plus from here, I've got ammonia. And I'll be giving the H plus to the water, so I have H3O plus. Now we should remember that ammonia being weak has double-headed arrows in its equations. Okay? In other words, the ammonia that we form could turn back into these things, but a substantial amount will remain 
as this. Okay, so in other words, there will be H3O plus ions in solution as a result of this reaction happening, as a result of this hydrolysis. Okay, there won't be any OH minus ions added to the water as a result of this. Okay, so in other words, in this solution, the concentration of H plus, which remember is the same as H3O plus, is not equal to the OH minus ion concentration, but greater than the OH minus ion. It's a horrible greater than sign, but hopefully you can understand what it means. So the pH is going to be acidic, or less than 7. Really am losing the power of writing here. Okay, so the pH is less than 7, because the concentration of H plus is greater than the concentration of OH minus. Okay, let's look at another salt. Okay, sodium methanoate. Now this time we've got the sodium ion and the ethanoate ion. Let's try and write some hydrolysis equations for those two ions. Well, sodium could potentially react with water and make sodium hydroxide, as we discussed earlier, and we'd be left with H+. But we've got a strong base over here, so that reaction doesn't happen at all. And we don't make this H plus ion, okay? Not as a result of the reaction with sodium. What would ethanoate ions do if they reacted with water? Well, they're the conjugate base of a weak acid, ethanoic acid. So they could maybe take H plus from water. Water could act as an acid, okay? Giving its H plus to the ethanoate ion, we'd make ethanoic acid which we know is weak, so there's a double-headed arrow in the equation, okay? And what we're left with is OH minus ions from the water, the conjugate base of water, which is acting as an acid, okay? So here, we will make some of these, because this is weak, and only, a, only some of it will turn back into those things. So we will have an excess of OH minus in the solution, and so, let's see if I can write the symbols a bit better this time, the OH minus ion concentration is greater than the concentration of H plus. And that means that the solution is basic, okay? Or in other words, the pH is greater than 7. All right, so when you've got the conjugate base of a weak acid and a neutral ion, you'll have a basic solution. In the previous slide, we had the conjugate, let's just go back to that slide, we had the conjugate, this was the conjugate acid of a weak base, and we had a slightly acidic solution. Okay, now moving on. What happens if you've got an acidic ion and a basic ion? Well, let's have a look what we do in these situations. We've got two ions, NH4 plus and CH3COO minus. Both of them could potentially react with water. This could act as an acid and give water H plus. This could act as a base and take H plus away from water. And as we've seen before, we're going to have some double-headed arrows to show that we could form ammonia and that some of it will hang around and we're left with H3O plus. And here we're going to form ethanoic acid and we're going to be left with some OH minus. Now clearly both these reactions do happen as we've discussed before. So in other words we're going to form both of those ions. Okay. Now the trouble here is you don't know which one there's going to be more of. So in other words asking you the question of what the pH of this would be like is a difficult one to answer because you don't know if it's going to be acidic because this one is more acidic than that one is basic or if it's going to be basic because this one is more basic than that one is acidic. Okay, so in other words, this is a tough call, right? You can't really judge. Okay, but what you could certainly say is that it's not going to be as acidic as a solution that contains ammonium ions and some neutral ion and it's not going to be as basic as a solution that contains the ethanoate ion and some neutral ion. Okay, so in other words, this is a tough call. You can't really judge what the pH of this one is going to be, but you can certainly write some hydrolysis equations. Okay, so what we have done there in that film is we've looked at some salts that give us acidic, basic, and neutral solutions in water, and we've written equations to show how those pHs arise. Okay, these are qualitative statements, not quantitative in the waste course. If there's anything there that causes you difficulty, then please let me know. If some of the terms that we've been using, like conjugate acids and so on and so forth, are confusing, then it would be good to review your knowledge of the Year 11 material. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's about it for the hydrolysis of salts.